Here's a big mystery, and it's very hard for people to, to understand the Bible truly, unless Christ Jesus and our Heavenly Father, by means of the Holy Spirit, has given you eyes to see and ears to hear. But only those who truly want the truth and not their own wish will be drawn by God to Christ. So there's a lot of places Romans is great for understanding grace and sin and being reborn. Um, I think Galatians too, there's a bunch of them. And people have the wrong idea about grace. They have the wrong idea about sin. They think once saved, always saved. And they think that Jesus has forgiven all their sins. And so they believe that it's impossible to not sin. But the Bible makes it very clear that those who are reborn do not sin any longer. Now, do they go for, I'm going to prove this to you, so just hold on, I'm going to prove it from the Bible. Little bits at a time, because there's so much, so go look at my playlist, I'll put it up at the end of the video, and link it in the pinned comments. I'll have a playlist on how to be set free in Christ from sin. So, Deja, come. If you don't put the animals away, they will, they all, my dog always poops before I, up, up, come, when I'm about to do anything spiritual. And um, they'll always make noise or be of some nuisance when I try to do something. So I have to make sure I remember to have them in their proper places. Bird is away. Puppy was not. Um, so we're just gonna, after in Romans up until chapter five, it's talking a lot about grace. I love Romans now that I've been truly transformed in the mind of Christ, died to my old ways, conformed to Christ and desist from sin, reborn. I realized I was still a slave to sin, so based on the Bible, I wasn't set free in Christ nor reborn fully before till now. If we look at chapter 6 after it talks a bit about grace, now it talks about it in a way that's difficult for people. The Bible says difficult for people to see and understand. There's a reason the Bible is written that way, because only your eyes will be opened by means of the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ, to those whose true wish is to have truth no matter the cost. We're going to read chapter 6. And I wish I didn't leave the fireplace on either. Um, so it goes on to say, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? After talking all about grace? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? It's actually, the Bible keeps saying it's impossible once you're truly reborn. Once you've died to self. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism and death that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. You're a new creation. You are counted holy because your God's, your acts and God's, your deeds of godly devotion are holy without spot and blemish. Now let me just, for those of you that are getting stumbled, do not stumble on the stepping stone, the cornerstone of Christ. You will put to death all your former deeds of conduct and sin that you are practicing. You will no longer live that life, nor can you, if you're truly reborn. You might sin a bit in word and deed in, in what the world would say as little things, but you will, once you catch it, you will no longer walk in that and practice it. You'll put it to death. You'll keep putting it to death. It'll be done. We go forward and we keep being made new in Christ's image. There is no room for sin. 
That is not what the Bible says. And we can lose our inheritance. Uh, once Christ has forgiven you, once you feel you're uh, reborn and he's called you, uh, you can lose it. You can still be found unworthy. Don't let people tickle, tickle your ears. We want the truth no matter the cost. The truth is in the Bible. For if we have, uh, verse 5, For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man or woman was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with. It's done away with. That we should no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Later, Paul goes on to say, Miserable man that I am, who can rescue me from this death? He says, like, for what I wish to do is not what is present with me, but what is, what, it, what for what I wish to do is not what is present with me, but the bad I do not wish to do is what I practice. Miserable man that I am, who will rescue me from this death? Thanks to Jesus Christ. And the next chapter after, he says, Unless you are set free in Christ, you cannot inherit the kingdom because you're a slave. You're a slave. Slaves do not inherit the inheritance of the family. So it's Jesus Christ. It says the son, it says, happy are you um, when the son sets you free. That was my pivotal moment two months ago, realizing I was not set free. Okay. I loved and I had a million really good excuses, even up with the tick bite that happened and, and all kinds of health ailments that beer solved. I started to love alcohol more than Christ Jesus and I kept falling to it. You will not continue in sin anymore, nor will you have that desire. It says in verse 8, now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Everyone is the walking dead who practices and walks in sin every day. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, just like him, because he set the pattern, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies, that you should obey it in its lusts. Later on in the Bible, in these little books, and in this chapter, it's going to say, if you're set free in Christ and reborn, it's impossible for you to sin any longer. Okay, so therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies that you should obey it in, in its lusts. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead. I had baptized myself in the bathtub and knew I was, I wanted to die to my sins and I didn't know how. And I didn't trust that I wouldn't fall back to them. Now I am set free. You see, I'm giving everyone the tools in my videos to what helped, but I'm finding no one wants them. I would have given anything. I literally think I would have wanted my, like, if I had to lose a limb or an eye or my vision to have the tools that I have now um, to set me free, no one told me. They didn't have the answers. Um, and I'm trying to bring it to people, but I notice they don't actually want it. Verse 13, and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God for sin shall not have dominion over you for you are not under law, but under grace. If you're under law, you can't stop sinning. Law was there to show you up as a sinner. So if you're still sinning, it's showing you up as still under law and sin. The grace of God, if you've been set free in Christ, as the book of Romans goes on to say, only Christ can set you free, but he won't do it. 
unless you are willing to have the truth. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Do you want the truth no matter the cost? Otherwise you won't be set free. Just keep reading Romans from where I am now. So there's uh, probably more I could say. I'm just going to cut this one short and I, and I might do another one. Because we all have squirrel brains due to the weapons of Satan, and which is technology. That is frying our brains and the food and air we breathe. It's all purposely contaminated from those that uh, we have a wrestling against. Which isn't flesh and blood, but works through flesh and blood. But is the rulers of this world. And those uh, ministers in the flesh of Satan working as angels of light. Let's stop there, meditate, pray upon this. Um, I might I might come back and do more, more of this. I just want to make sure that I have what the Spirit is saying. I have lots of information about being set free. My testimony of being reborn, you'll find in the playlist and on the front page, and being set free to sin, I'll make sure I put that up today, God willing. Uh, this is God's work, not my own. And I'm trying to say that this is God and Jesus Christ YouTube page. And they work through me. God bless you all. Desist from sin if you're not reborn. Ask. Beg. And be willing to be set free by accepting all truth, no matter the cost, not your own wish, but the will of God for you. Bless you all. Oh, disclaimer, not a disclaimer, but um, all praise to God and our Heavenly Father. Um, I was a bit weary and even said it to a friend of mine, and you know who you are. I was a bit weary about my husband's seeming to change because he seems to have changed so many times while just becoming an agent of the devil willfully to destroy me while pretending to be a Christian. But since two weeks into my being reborn and him having seen the truth of the power of Christ and God in me, he has been making two steps forward to his every one step back and making progress. And I can only pray and hope that he will continue to do well. And in the last week, he's done exceptionally well. This is the best he's ever done because he's coming at it from the right perspective, dying to self and having no selfish ambition. If you have any selfish ambition from here on out, you cannot be reborn. I hope everyone can understand. There's so much to learn that I need to bring to you. It'll take hundreds of videos, God willing, if he allows my ministry to continue and continues to view me as good enough to bring all glory and praise to Christ, our heavenly, uh, Christ Jesus, the Son of God, our Heavenly Father, our, uh, his, his Father and ours, and the Holy Spirit, He, the Advocate and Helper, that teaches us all things that come from the Father in Christ. God bless you all. Take care. Ciao, ciao.